This is the uh, Sound Transit N125 project, uh, Maple Leaf to the University of Washington UW portal. I'm the project manager for the, for the joint venture for this project. The joint venture is made up of JD Contractors, Coluccio Construction Company, and Michaels Corporation. The tunnel is going to be for light rail. Uh, Sound Transit, the City of Seattle is building a, um, a regional uh, transit, light rail transit system, and these are the tunnels that um, they'll put the trains in. My name is Rick Kapka. I am a construction manager for Sound Transit. This project is bringing light rail from the University of Washington all the way up to a community in north part of Seattle called Northgate. It's a three and a half mile tunnel. There's also another mile of light rail that will be built north of the end of the tunnel. If you've had a chance to drive on the highway in the Seattle area, you probably had a chance to see the tough traffic conditions. The road infrastructure is limited in many ways, so the point of, of light rail transit is to give uh, commuters other options. So the machine that's breaking through today will be moved across the station invert, and they will relaunch it at the south end of the site, and it will be on its way for about another mile. We've had one breakthrough already on this job, and that's with the other machine. This will be the second of six We've got an opportunity to have six breakthroughs in total on this project. You know, basically two miles of tunnel from where we are today to tie into the university link. So we have three main work sites on our project. Um, we're standing in the Maple Leaf portal. There won't be a station here. This is just where the, the light rail comes up out of the ground. South of here, it's all underground. So the diameter of the tunnel is 18 feet, 10 inches, finished ID. Um, the length of the two tunnels are about 18,400 feet each. This particular job, I think the largest challenge was space. The job site at Northgate is very, very small. It's very narrow. Uh, so we had to move the machine around a few times, move the Hitachi machine to get our machine in. That took some logistical work from JCM uh, that allowed us to, to execute the OFTA. So we used OFTA on site first time assembly, um, primarily because um, schedule was a, was a big issue for us. Using OFTA uh, probably saved us a month to a month and a half on our overall project schedule. JCM and Robbins worked together on the off the assembly. Robbins Field Service was responsible for leading the crews, for making sure the connections were all made properly, and for testing out the PVM. Robbins machines are traditionally the strongest of EPB tunnel boring machines, so we can rebuild them many times. They're built for 10,000 hours of life in the main bearing, and we have a very large main bearing to shield ratio. Robbins machines have more torque and more thrust than our competitors. Um, so that gives us the ability to push harder, and as we push harder, to be able to keep turning the cutter head. It's made good progress to date. Uh, I would say it has a lot of power. It's got really good ability to, to advance um, in the ground conditions that we're in. We're in uh, soft ground conditions, so we have sand, we have silt, we have till, we have clays. The main challenge on this job so far is, is that we're tunneling in the, in the dense uh, glacially deposited sand above the water table. It was very hard to, uh, to condition that soil to, to a degree that we could effectively uh, excavate it. 75% of this entire job is downhill, so as we were tunneling downhill, we, we started above the water table and we slowly got more and more into more and more saturated ground until about 4,000 feet in, we were completely below the water table. We have advanced as fast as 120 millimeters a minute, which is generally considered the, the upper operating limit of this tunnel boring machine. Um, there's been some difficulty moving the sand through the machine, so, that, so we've mostly been boring at about 90 millimeters a minute. And so we're going to look now at opening the cutter head up a little bit more during this interim period. Uh, you're, you're always kind of interested to see what the cutter head looks like when it comes out because we haven't, we haven't looked at the cutter head in, in about a mile of tunneling. 
I have a lot more confidence that the Robins is going to be able to survive the boulders, going to be able to survive the cobbles, and that we're not going to have to, uh, we're going to have a less chance of being having to go out and, um, and fix the face of the cutter head, we, you know, because of the fact that it's so much more robust. With this hole through, we're just beyond 50% complete with all of the tunneling, all of the large diameter tunneling on the project. Uh, so it's a tremendous day for us to celebrate here.